Many of us are stuck in the so-called rat race. We work long hours in jobs that we don't like in order to earn money to buy stuff that we don't really need. This endless pursuit of material wealth often leaves us feeling empty and hollow. Consequently, we don't have the free time to spend in meaningful relationships with our family and friends. We live a life of waking up, going to work, coming home and then going to bed, rinse and repeat. Many of us say things like, I'll have plenty of time to do the things I enjoy after I retire. But how does anybody know if they'll ever reach that age? The retirement age keeps going up, at least here in Australia. Health issues, accidents and so on can suddenly occur. None of us can honestly know if we'll be alive next week, let alone after 30 or 40 years. So why do we keep holding off enjoyment in our lives? I used to think, if I just worked hard enough, if I just put in enough hours, then everything will be okay. I'll have the financial freedom to do what I like. But then I realised that I wasn't seeing my children. I was heading off to work before they woke up, and wasn't getting back until 10 minutes before they went to bed. What a meaningless existence. So now that I'm a little bit older and a little bit wiser, I've realised that doing endless amounts of work just to attain some predefined notion of success is a fool's errand. If I work hard at work, my colleagues barely even notice. They're too busy with their own lives. If I buy a new car, nobody really cares, except for perhaps the salesman who sold it to me. It's such a waste of one's life to pursue such things. So I decided a couple of years ago to start doing things that interest me. To stop wasting my life working all the time in jobs that I don't particularly like. To spend more time with my family and to enjoy the little things in life. It's all very cliché, but important to me. In the mornings, I make sure to be able to walk my children to school, at least three or four times a week. I've arranged with work to allow this to happen. Occasionally, unavoidable work commitments do come up, but on average, I've stuck to my goal over the last couple of years. If my employer can't accommodate this simple request, then I find a different employer. Luckily, my current employer is very flexible with work hours. On the way to work, I make sure to walk through the local parkland as much as I can. I follow the path along the edge of the nearby waterway and get to experience all the wonderful sights. Ducks paddling in the water, splashing about, having a morning bath. Dogs running around without their leashes, enjoying the water and the cool breeze blowing in their faces. Elderly couples walking along hand in hand, soaking up the warm morning sun. Smiles on their faces, clearly without a care in the world. There are also these strange-looking purple-breasted black water birds with a red beak and crest. They have these long orange chicken-like legs which they use to strut about with along the water's edge. I know them now to be some kind of swamp hen. They never seem too scared of me, but when a dog runs their way, they tend to use their long legs to run away rather than fly. They seem to have a cheeky air about them. Although there are routinely other people in the parkland in the mornings, I'm probably the youngest one. Mostly there are senior citizens who aren't too worried about the hustle and bustle of modern day life. You can see it on their faces, they're just there to relax and enjoy. They're not checking their smartphones, they're not writing a text message, they're not measuring their heart rate or listening to music, they're not even wearing sneakers or athletic wear. They're just walking and enjoying the world around them. So where did we go wrong? When did we decide that it was good to be busy? Who convinced us that it's good to be in an eternal haze of endless emails, constant meetings, performance reports and employee satisfaction surveys? We routinely give up coming home early so that we can finish off the latest monthly report. All the time we're stuck in a cubicle, squandering our lives away. There are people on their deathbeds who speak of the regrets they had in their lives. They openly admit that they didn't spend enough time with their families, or wasted a lot of their time doing things that they didn't really want to do. And to what end? Just to get a little bit of extra money? Just to keep a faceless boss happy? But we all know this. We all know that these people exist. We can read about it on any blog post. But yet, we don't see the warning signs in our own lives and continue working jobs we hate for people we don't like. We skip important family milestones because work comes first. 
We work on a Saturday morning because the boss told us that it's important to finish off the proposal by Monday. When we don't finish it on Saturday, we bring it home with us and work on it at home. The whole time, our kids are pestering us to go play with them outside, but we keep telling them, Daddy's busy. Don't you know that I have to finish off the proposal by Monday? And for some strange reason, at that moment, we think that's a reasonable excuse. We think that not spending time with our young children is a reasonable trade-off for keeping the boss happy. And when we do have free time, we're so exhausted that we just plonk ourselves down in front of the computer and watch online videos or play computer games. Do you really want to be that person who wakes up in 40 years' time realizing they've wasted everything? That you've turned into but an empty shell of your former self? When you were 20, you had the world ahead of you. You wanted to travel, to help people out, to write a book, or to learn to play the bass guitar. But instead you became an accountant or an investment banker working long hours with an unrelenting workload. Over the last few years, I decided that I'm not going to let a company rule my life. I'm not going to let a boss tell me when I can and can't see my son. I'm going to put my life first. If the boss doesn't like it, well, so be it. If I have to get a new job with a more accommodating boss, then I will do so. It is not the role of a company to control my life, but that's certainly how many of us treat it. So I have one piece of advice for all of those listeners who feel unfulfilled. Slow down. Life is not a race. There's no end goal where once you get $1 million or $10 million you win. Live your life how you wish to live it. Don't let people dictate to you when you can and can't have holidays. Take time off work to go watch your son's first athletics carnival. Volunteer at the school to help out with swimming lessons or reading groups. Participate in life. Don't just be a cog in some corporate machine. The company doesn't care about you, so why do you give a damn what they think? Slow down in life. Spend time with your family and friends. Turn off the TV and take a walk in the park with your wife. Enjoy the warmth of the morning sun. Experience nature. Enjoy all the interesting wildlife that exists in the local parkland. Eat healthily. Stay fit. Live life.